John and his colleagues for conducting such a great trial and for stimulating an area that had uh, previously become a concern because of the failure of so many other trials to uh, show an effect of treatment. This is a brief summary of the trial. I just want to highlight some important points and I think the most important points here are that the patients were selected I think more carefully than in previous trials. So it was a very smart design. They were enrolled earlier patients had a higher blood pressure and in addition patients had a moderate impairment of renal function and the objective of this trial was to improve breathlessness. These are the endpoints, two co-primary endpoints examining breathlessness, two secondary endpoints looking at morbidity and mortality. Then there were a lot of additional efficacy endpoints, one of which was cardiovascular death. And lastly, there were a lot of safety outcomes, including all-cause mortality. And as John pointed out, the trial was clearly positive for one of the co-primary endpoints, didn't quite meet, meet the second co-primary endpoint, and didn't reach either of the secondary endpoints. In terms of the primary endpoint, breathlessness, I think there is little doubt that this agent was beneficial. Uh, the totality of the evidence, the breathlessness measurements, the signs, the symptoms, the use of other therapies and so on, I think, to me at least, quite clearly indicate that this drug is doing something good in terms of relief of symptoms and congestion. I'm sure there will be questions about this nevertheless because there always is and I think there will be questions about for example what does an area under the curve change mean but there are other meaningful differences including in length of stay and uh, undoubtedly there will be some regulatory discussion about whether a single trial is sufficient uh, to approve a therapy but I think the much more important issue here is the apparent effect on all-cause mortality because if nothing else this trial is paradigm shifting at least in making us think about what is going on in acute heart failure and what we are trying to do for this condition. It may even be paradigm shifting in terms of what we can achieve but that I'm less certain about. And on this slide, I'm not going to go through it in detail, are the arguments why one might think that the observed difference in mortality might be a real finding. And John has, I think, done a very good job in trying to put all of that together. On the other hand, I think there are probably only two concerns that might make one more cautious in interpreting that this is a real finding. The one is the lack of benefits on heart failure and renal rehospitalization. Very unusual to see a treatment in heart failure that can improve survival but not reduce rehospitalization. But there was an imbalance in between the two treatment groups in favour of placebo in terms of previous heart failure hospitalisation, so this is difficult to interpret. And the other concern is all of this is based on small numbers, pre, a non-pre-specified outcome and small numbers. And in heart failure, as John and I have discussed many times in the past, uh, we've been famously misled by small numbers. I'll give two examples. One was with Visnarnone. The other more recent and perhaps better known example was with Losartan. A small study initially suggesting a very large treatment in all-cause mortality, but when uh, there was an attempt to replicate this benefit in a much larger trial, that proved not to be the case. And this is what John's shown you today, 64 versus 41 deaths. The p-value here is slightly different. I've done a chi-square test, but it's still significant. This is what happens if I move two patients from one treatment group to another. 
So if it was 62 versus 43 deaths, you can see that this mortality difference is no longer significant. All that is, all I'm showing this to do is to illustrate that small numbers often don't give you robust and reliable estimates of benefit. So my own feeling about this is that it would be very nice to see this finding replicated. If we did replicate this finding, it would be an extraordinary advance in the management of acute heart failure for which we have no disease modifying or life-saving therapies.